Hi, this is Richard Rowe, um, truck driver and candidate for Congress in Florida District 3. Uh, coming to you live from the beautiful D.C. in, uh, I don't know, just outside downtown Sarasota. Uh, this is the first edition of, well, I, I assume to be the first edition, it's probably going to be really shitty, of uh, a little something I'm calling the road report. Um, I'm going to try to do it every day or whatever and post it on my congressional page. Um, just a little report from on the ground, giving some perspective on what's actually going on in America in the real world as opposed to what you're going to see on mainstream media and, and television, that sort of thing. The reality we see on TV is a lot different than what's out here in the real world. Over there. Yes, you're on my sun visor. Um, so I'm here to give you the reality as I see it on a daily basis and, and, and sort of the justifications for why I feel the way I do and some of the stuff you might see me say other places. Today's topic is that over there. That large line of trucks. Because I think it exemplifies exactly why our economy is utterly failing and why it's going to fail to, to uh, contain and deal with coronavirus. Um, that big line of trucks over there it's not move okay normally at this dc you get one or two trucks over there on the live load line and all the rest of them are sort of uh you can't see it but it's back this direction is a big line of drop trailers where we normally leave stuff um that isn't the case right now um it isn't the case anywhere this isn't normal what we're seeing here right now we never see a huge line of trucks on the ready line or, or a live loading. Another big line of trucks is over here and the full drop trailer load. That There's normally only one or two trucks here. Um, and you might think that's a good thing. Oh, industry and stuff's moving around and things are getting to your home that you need because you're hemmed in because of the coronavirus and that's great. And I'm glad to be out here performing that final service. Um, but I've been waiting for three hours. All those guys over there, probably about the same. There are more trucks over here waiting three hours and a few like on the backside of the camera that you can't see. We've all been waiting here for hours and hours. Why is that? Um, because this DC only has a certain number of employees. They only have a certain number of forklifts and yard dogs and people working in the warehouse and especially shipping and receiving. There's only so many. And because Publix, like everyone else, tries to keep its staff to a minimum, um, just like Walmart tries to keep cashiers to a minimum, hospitals hire the minimum number of janitors. Everybody wants the minimum number of staff because all these companies are trying to save money. And that works out fine as long as things are running normally, as long as capitalism is in a state of sort of homeostasis, um, where there's a constant balance of inflow to outflow. You know, there's a balance of trucks to cashier, or trucks to clerks and janitors to patients and hospitals, and everything works out fine as long as it's in sort of that biosphere of homeostasis. Um, but the minute you interrupt that, you get this. Trucks lined up here for hours and hours. Now, that's an inconvenience in a grocery store, and it pisses you off to stand in line for, at Walmart for four hours, as always, because they have 60 registers and three cashiers on duty because they don't believe in paying people. Um, that's an issue in a grocery store here, it's a major problem. Here, in logistics, is where the really fundamental issues behind America's economy get exposed. Because this is where things back up. This is where the failures happen. The problem with logistics is, and, and the reason you see these failures sort of exemplified in logistics, is we've all been waiting two hours or three hours or more, okay? We as truck drivers get paid by the mile. I'm not getting paid right now. We can only work a certain number of hours in a day and we can only pick up and receive at certain hours in the day, okay? So when stuff like this happens, um, it costs us money, it costs the companies money, loads don't get picked up, loads don't get delivered, okay? This is where the system really falls apart. It's not just that I'm losing money and all these guys are losing money. There's, there's one woman over there. And a dog. The fact is, what's really tearing the system apart is I have a load to pick up to deliver 
right now in Memphis, Tennessee. Specifically, it's a load of bleach from Clorox. Okay. I'm not going to make that pickup because I'm sitting here. Because the company that I worked for planned on me being here for an hour and a half, which would be normal. I've now been here for five hours-ish. Okay. Like the rest of these people. I'm going to miss that pickup. That's 40,000 pounds of bleach. 44 thousand pounds of bleach which is not going to get delivered to Walmart in Memphis, Tennessee okay 44,000 pounds of it that if you happen to live and this is a Friday okay I'm delivering tomorrow it will be in the stores if you're in Memphis, Tennessee on Sunday and you can't find bleach in Walmart this is the reason why Okay. These guys right here. This this guy right here. This is the reason why you cannot buy bleach in Tennessee on Sunday. That's not just a problem economically. That's where the whole system falls apart. That's why America is going to fail to deal with COVID, to deal with the coronavirus, to deal with any of anything that disrupts the homeostatic biosphere of our very carefully controlled um, socialism for the rich. Uh, capitalist system um, which isn't capitalism it's state sponsored cronyism but anyway um, the reason we are going to fail because of this system is because I'm delivering bleach to Walmart this is 800 miles from here 1000 miles from here okay um, that's 44 <laughs> God only knows how many thousands of bottles of bleach that are not going to be there which means probably 500 cases of Corona are going to spread because this truck is not going to be in that state. 500 cases of Corona are probably going to happen in Memphis, Tennessee because of those trucks right there. Those 500 are going to infect probably 5,000 more. And then 50,000 after that. And that's just my truck. That's this one trailer. Never mind those guys. Okay? How many people are going to die because Publix didn't want to hire more cashiers or didn't want to hire more clerks. They didn't want to pay for more staff. They wanted to cut dollars off the bottom line and, and, and depend on, on the static nature of our economy to keep it going. Um, now, understand I'm not picking on Publix specifically. Actually, they're pretty good compared to Walmart and a lot of other places. Um, Walmart is just awful in general. I hate Walmart. But they're just like anywhere else. They want to keep their staff low. And that's the problem with, with, with America. Is because of our unregulated, hyper-capitalist, exploitative, labor-exploitative system where companies want to maximize profit at the expense of labor at all costs, it is costing us. Okay? Because that system only works as long as nothing disrupts it. But when you get disruptions like this, crap like that happens, and then people die. So let's go over the sequence of events here. Because this is going on 10 minutes. The sequence of events is, Publix reduced staff to save money for themselves. Okay? The reduced staff caused the trucks to back up. Okay? Backed up trucks equal miss loads. Miss loads equal dead people. Dead people probably equal staffing shortages. Math seems pretty simple to me. And so what's the solution? Well, for me, it's to sit here on my ass making videos that are running way too long as it is. Um, for America, the solution is, well, we can look at countries that are actually dealing with this well, like the Netherlands and South Korea, places like that. Um, what do they have? They have strong industrial regulation, worker representation on corporate boards, they have powerful union presence, um, strong labor laws, a living minimum wage, which we do not have. They have strong minimum wages, uh, good social safety nets, and of course, health care. They have health care. Yeah, I believe to myself, I'm real proud of that. They have health care, man. That's why they're dealing with this well. They have good social safety nets, strong union presence. They have industrial regulation and freaking health care. 
I can guarantee you that as bad as Europe has it, as bad as a lot of places have it, they're not getting backups like this. Okay? They're not having the problems that we're only beginning to see now and will get exponentially worse in the very near future. Because there's going to be a lot of dead people in Memphis next week because of those trucks right there. This has been the Road Report. I'm Richard Allen Rowe, candidate for Congress in Florida District 3. Talk to you later, hopefully next time for less time and with a better setup.